Hi there. Welcome to the Paula Fiscal Show. We are on the air on Channel 29 on Sundays at 3 o'clock p.m. We also upload all of our shows to YouTube and there is also a Facebook page, the Paula Fiscal Facebook page. We have a very special guest with us today by the name of Dr. Ronvig H. Elbach. And Dr. Ronnie, as we all call her, is a specialist in her practice, which was general practitioner, but she went into the whole area of diseases that uh, she calls uh, the metabolic diseases, and also she became a very well-known name among women and men also on how to lose weight. Now, for those of us that uh, are familiar with the up and downs of, of the gaining and, and dropping weight and losing it and, and then doubling up, we're going to welcome the, the show for today because it has everything to do with how to read labels. It's not enough to know what not to eat. We need to know what we can eat. And so we welcome Dr. Rani. Thank you very much, Paula. I appreciate that. When we talk about reading labels, we need to have a context around it. We need to have a focus because if you just read labels nilly-willy, it's almost like reading the phone book. So we want to focus on ourselves and our nutrition. In other words, what do we need to eat in a day and what's good and bad for us? And that's where labels come in. And we have a couple of uh, labels today that we're going to go over that uh, you can help us decipher what we're eating and what we should eat and right. should not eat. So which one do you wish to start with? First of all, we need to understand how, what, what, how to balance the food groups and what it is that we need in a day. And out from that, we pick our labels. We pick what we, what we are trying to, to Okay, so eat. if we are runners, for example, should we make sure we get a lot of protein or is it carbohydrates? I mean, and you remember people are always saying, I'm running the marathon, which is why I'm stuffing myself with spaghetti the night before. Let's start with the average person. Let's suppose that you sit there at home and you're an average person and you want to maintain your weight and you want to be healthy. We need to look at the different food groups for you. And let's say that you are a woman of 5'7". You need a certain amount of protein. You need a half a gram of protein for each pound that you weigh. And if you weigh 120 pounds or 130 pounds, that would be 65 grams of protein, right? So the first thing you want to do now is pick your protein. So we need to know where proteins occur. And they occur in animal products, in dairy products, in some soy products, in some protein bars, and some protein snacks. Those are the main groups of complete protein. The protein in uh, grains are not complete and they don't really count in terms of our, and they are small in number, so they don't really count towards the daily uh, allotments. So let's say then that you need 65 pro uh, grams of protein in a day. You would divide that up in three feedings and then you would take protein products and then you would notice something very interesting about protein. Most protein doesn't have a label. It's a fresh food and you find it in the perimeter of your supermarket and that's where you should operate. You shouldn't operate in the middle where you find the labels. So that is your first rule is that your core of your nutritional program needs to come from the perimeter where the proteins are, where all of those nice meats, fish, cottage cheese, yogurt, soy products, all of those wonderful products are. And just to name you one, just to give you an example, let's suppose that you want to have three meals with 20 grams of protein each. Here is a can of salmon. This is an excellent protein. And how to read it now? You say, okay, I am trying to obtain 20 grams of protein. So I need to look to see, number one, how big is the serving? So we see here that one serving here happens to be two ounces. And the next thing we ask, for two ounces of this, how many proteins will I buy myself, so to speak? 
you will buy yourselves 13 grams of protein. Now that's close to, that's going on 20, on the 20 that you need if you divide it 60 by 3. So now you have 13 grams of protein. So if you eat 3 ounces, now you have 20 grams of protein. So 3 ounces of this is the core of your one meal, let's say. So that's how you count protein. You, number one, you look at how big the serving is, and number two, you look at how much protein you get for that amount of, that amount of food. But how many servings are in that can? This will tell you that there are two servings, so it's two a half servings. a can. Okay. It's a half a can. So if I was going to eat protein for a day, yes. this would cover my... Two meals. Lunch and my dinner. Yes, it would cover two, two meals. If I don't want to have salmon and for that, breakfast and with my egg. Which is... My egg whites. Which is, is a choice you make or, you, or not. That's but right. But this is really how simple it is. Now we have the core of your nutritional program, because we have fed your muscle. We have the core going. So what else is there to do or to think about? Well, there are two more food groups. Remember the last time we talked, we talked about the food groups. So if you recall, there is the fat. And let's think about the fat group now. Uh, few people drink oil or eat lard. So fat happens together with other things. So they cannot really be measured by themselves. Only the oils we use for salad dressing and we fry in and co cook in, we can measure. And it's very simple. One tablespoon of olive oil or any kind of oil, and, and the good ones are not on olive oils. One tablespoon is 150 calories. End of story. What is your daily requirement of oil, of, of fat? It is three tablespoons of olive oil or the equivalent. That was easy. Now you're done with oil, with fat. Now you're done with so fat. So three tablespoons. So if you go to a restaurant and you get a dressing, yes. there's three tablespoons in half of the dressing that they put into a, a salad. Yes, there is. So what you do is you ask for your dressing on the side and either you ladle on three tablespoons or you, eat, you dip your fork and do it that way. But you get used to eating the three tablespoons of dressing rather than a, a, a cup of dressing. And, and but that, that, that'll only work if you didn't have any other fats during the day. That's like your in fat the morning when you make your yes. eggs, if you use olive oil, then that's already one tablespoon right there. My point is we need very, very little fat in a day. Okay, so those are the olive oils and then the, the latest is the coconut oils. Correct. And the Correct. canola oils. And, and yes. then now I've seen they also have avocado oil combined with uh, hemp oil. Avocado oil is very similar biochemically to olive oil. It's very good for you. Excellent. Yeah, so all these oils you mentioned are all fine. But we brought in a new concept here. We brought in the concept of calories. And I don't teach my patients calories because it's less productive than teaching people the power of the foods that you eat. So I just taught you how to count protein. I just taught you how to count fat. But now we get to counting carbohydrates. <laughs> so let us first consider carbohydrates as a group. Carbohydrates are sugar that occur on a sliding scale, so to speak, from 0 to 10, or 0 to 100, whatever you want. And at 0, it, there is no sugar and all fiber, such a tree bark and grass. If we try to eat that, we don't have the enzymes to get sugar out of it, but cows do. So that's not for us. Next come the vegetables, the green vegetables, and next come all of the vegetables. Now they are up in, carb uh, in sugar value, say 30 to 20 to 30 on the scale. So they have more sugar, but they always have more fiber. So when you eat them, you get more fiber than sugar and they slowly run, come into your bloodstream and they are not, they are good, they are not bad for you because they have uh, greenery and, and polyphenols and, and anti-cancer and that sort of agent. So they're good for you. Color, we eat by color, so to speak. But in your book, The Food Tree, yeah. you talk about how we shouldn't even be eating corn. Well, we haven't gotten to corn yet. Oh. <laughs> now, so now we have vegetables. We have, now we have done fibers, we have done tree bark, and we have done vegetables. So now let, the next one is legumes. And legumes are a little higher in sugar, and a little, they also are very, very fibrous. So they, again, slowly release in your bloodstream and are very, very good for you. And they can be used as a starch, as how we use starches now. They are excellent. The, the, the peas and the beans are excellent for you because they are so low in, in sugar power. 
Next come fruit and fruits. And fruit are right in the middle of this scale that we have set up. And you can eat two or three pieces of fruit, but do not juice them. Because if you juice a fruit, you bring out pure sugar. But if you leave the fruit whole, you have more fiber and less sugar, and you still are kind of kind to your blood sugar. It's not so bad. If you eat only one fruit, it doesn't really spike your blood sugar. So you're, are you saying that we should eat a half of a banana or a half an apple? Don't eat the whole apple. Don't eat the whole banana? A round fruit or a half a banana is one serving. 15 grapes, uh, those kinds of servings. We're, we're dealing with a serving that's reasonable. It's not like a half an apple. You can eat so a whole apple. So those big, beautiful Asian apples, those don't count. You have to eat a quarter of those. Well, <laughs> if, if this is the worst you do, an apple is fine. An <laughs> apple is fine. Now, above, the next group that comes now, the next food group now, is the grains. And now we are looking at corn, which you just brought me. We are looking at rice. We are looking at pasta. And we are looking at all the bread grains, all the cereal grains, all the grains. And all the grains are, are up there in glycemic index, or up there in sugar power. They are over 60 and 70, and they spike your blood sugar just as does sugar on top of the scale. They spike your blood sugar, and they are not good for you so because... for example, this is a cracker that's organic, gluten-free, whole grain, and vegan. Now... Does that make this cracker better? Organic, gluten-free, whole grain, and vegan are all keywords to deflect your attention from the fact that you're eating a high, very, very refined sugar. So let us use the same principle and look at the nutrition facts of these crackers, and we will find out the following. We are eating 12 crackers. Now, I don't know how big these crackers are. They're very little. They're very, very they're like tiny. Silver so they're eating like a silver, like right. a silver penny, like right. silver Sil dollar, silver, silver dollar. dollar. There's yeah. no silver penny. Don't. <laughs> so for a, that one, for, for 12 of these, we are paying, so to speak, 150 calories. And we are obtaining, what are we getting back for 150 calories? We are getting back three grams of protein. Three out of 12. In other words, 12 turns into three? No. We are spending 150 calories and we are buying ourselves three grams of protein. So we are getting no protein. We're getting no protein. No. Okay. We don't really want fat because fat comes from our cooking. Right, right. So if we don't, uh, if, and we get a little fat here, granted, there is a, a little 11% fat. But the mainstay of this then, is, there's only one thing left that it can be. What is it? It's grains. It's grains. It's grains. Yeah. It's a grain. It's a and carbohydrate. A, and a carbo and a grain is a quick carbohydrate and it raises your blood sugar. And it doesn't matter how healthy it is represented here to be, because this has not this has no bearing on what happens in your body when you eat it in terms of how strong the sugar is. And the strength of a sugar is measured by something that we call glycemic index. And that expresses how quickly a sugar raises your insulin. And if a sugar raises your insulin quickly, that is bad for the body and bad for the blood sugar and bad for health. But the, the, the ingredient in this is sugar. The, 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 the draw here is sugar. It's, it's sugar. grain. Okay, so and it's, grain it's is sugar. sugar. Yes, it's okay. sugar. Okay, so let's move on to a couple of these yeah. other foods here. Now, there is one thing that I didn't really talk about yet, and it's calories. Okay. We are women about... Five, four to five, seven to whatever, five, nine. And if you are talking about the um, average size woman, you're talking about 12 to 1500 calories a day. That's all. If you're a man, let's say a normal size man or an average size man, five, ten, this guy might need, uh, say, uh, 2000 calories at most. This is without exercise. If you exercise, it goes up. So, Count it out. I just ate salmon here and I paid, what did I pay in calories? We didn't talk about that. We, I, paid, I paid 60 calories for this salmon. I paid very little for the salmon. 60 calories is very good. Now, I took the three tablespoons of oil, I paid three, three, 450 calories for it. So my protein was very little. My fat was a lot. I'm up to 500 calories. I have 600 or 700 calories left. Now, if I start eating crackers, 
at 150 uh, calories per serving. I don't eat very many servings because my calories are up for the day. I don't have any calories left to eat the rest of the nutrition that I need. And I still need protein, I still need vegetables, I still need fiber and protein and fiber and, and good nu nutrients to be healthy. And instead I'm eating this white stuff that gives me nothing. But let's talk a little bit more about fiber yes. and the very popular granola bars or the, the energy bars. Right. Can we discuss exactly what those bars provide for us? Yeah. Granola is, is grains and, and sometimes oat grains that have been deep fried and with sugar coated and are very high in sugar. First you have the granola itself and then you have a sugar on top, so it's sugar on sugar. And it is said to be healthy because granola is supposed to be healthy and, and we have this myth going that, uh, that uh, there is no sugar in it and it's all sugar. I don't know why we have such myths going. Anyway, I brought two bars for us to look at. Okay, let's look at these bars. And this is called, um, well, it's, it's called a, a, a form of nutrition bar. A nutrition and, bar, yeah. okay. And we are paying 200 calories for this bar so that, think about the 1,200 calories you have a day. You're paying 200 for this bar. So how much protein towards your 65 grams a day are you getting? You're getting 8 grams of protein. Let me show you the gold standard of protein. There's a gold standard that you need to compare everything else to, and here it is. It could be cottage cheese because it weighs in, in the same way. This is a protein supplement that I used in my practice. And this is how I taught people to read labels. If you have this, there were seven protein drinks in this box and one protein drink in here, you took one protein drink, you paid 80 calories. And for that, you got yourself 16 grams of protein. Do you see what a great bargain that is for your body? And any time you look at any label of any protein, you compare it with 16 grams of, grams of protein for 80 calories, you compare it to that. So this is pretty good because here you have uh, eight, gra 13 grams of protein for two ounces, which is excellent. This is wonderful. So these things are good. Here, and is, is this something that looks like cream of tomato? Right, this was, these were the protein supplements I used. And the protein in that's in here is soy. Right, it's, they're, they're mixed proteins, but they're pure proteins. The point of it is they're pure proteins. So okay. let's go to the next bar. Here we have a bar. So you pick up a bar in the store and here's another bar. So how much, how many calories am I paying here? I am paying uh, 190 calories for this bar and I'm getting 21 grams of protein. 21, so that's, that's a good bar. That's a good bar. That's a good bar that's actually. That's a good bar, yeah. 21 yeah. grams of As opposed to this one. Yeah, do you begin to see where you right, have to right. reason and so what you have to So it says think. right on there 21 yes, grams of protein. Yes, it says right there. So that's what you want to read. Yeah, that's so what once you have read what you spent of calories and how much protein you got, the rest of it is going to be either fat or sugar, and either way it's bad because you've had all the, the fat you need. Right, and right. And your sugar in the bar might not be a good and thing. And how many carbohydrates in there? Okay, the carbohydrates in this one, are given to uh, be, this bar is very good because these are fiber carbohydrates. So oh, this bar okay. is so all around very good. So there's a big difference between just a regular carbohydrate yes. and a fiber carbohydrate. Yes. Remember I told you the carbohydrate, right. the fiber, right. and remember I told you? So we should about look. the fiber of the sugar because all carbohydrates are fiber and sugar. Okay. So, remember the so whole, we should look for the, the whole line that with I, the, I showed you. With, with the fiber. With the fiber. Yes, okay. we should. Now. This bar is 200 calories and gives you 8 grams of protein, so you know there's going to be something else in here because right. 8 grams of protein doesn't account for 200 calories. So you know this is not a great and, uh, a bargain, and it has a total of carbs, 16 grams. And it just says total of sugars. It doesn't specify what sugar it is. So this is... So it's a secret s sugar ingredient. It doesn't say what kind of sugar. It just says sugar. It probably is pure sugar. Pure yes, sugar. Sure. It probably is not a good bar for you. I would not recommend this bar. This kind of count is not the, good for that, you. That count is not this good. This okay. count is good because you, you are not paying, overpaying for your protein and there is not that much sugar in it. Therefore, there is not that much sugar in it. So this is how you weigh them. And if you think about calories, keep thinking that you have 1,200 calories 
per day to per spend. Twelve hundred dollars. That's, that's not your twelve hundred calories. That's your currency, and so you're trying you to buy nutrition. So then I should look for three hundred calories for breakfast. That's yes, it. That's that it. means I have that's to eliminate. It. A whole lot of things in my breakfast. So if you are eating one <laughs> slice of bread with one pad of butter and one ta tablespoon of uh, jam, you now have a carbohydrate load of 30 grams of carbohydrates, which is two servings of carbohydrate, and you have a serving of fat. And the problem with that is that you have not obtained the other part of the equation, which is the fiber and the color. The, the, f the fiber and the color that we get from vegetables and fruit, they give you okay. two things. They give you fiber okay. and they give you color. And the color is the polyphenols that are the anti-aging and anti uh, pro-immune, anti-cancer, all the g good nutrition nutrients that so, we need that, from the color. Okay, so according to this, then it, I may as well have a chicken leg and a carrot for breakfast. You could, but I would make it more palatable <laughs> and interesting to that, like that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so hard on myself. Well, yeah, I, I actually like having protein in the morning. Yeah. I feel better. I would have a couple of egg whites. I would have a yogurt. I would have some cottage cheese let's, in my yogurt. I would mix up yogurt. Let's talk a little bit more about this yogurt. Yes. Thing, because I had understood that if you eat yogurt, you're just eating a form of sugar. That is mis completely misunderstanding. Okay. This is a, a, a yogurt that has banana in it. Now, the minute you have a fruit in your yogurt, there is usually added sugar. Okay. So the best thing to do is to get a low-fat yogurt that is plain. Plain and, yogurt. Yeah, plain okay. yogurt. Yeah. Plain because, yogurt. Because the minute somebody adds fruit, they add sugar. Okay. That's almost saying I added sugar. So let us see what they did here, and let us first find out what the serving is. The whole container, you are paying, how many calories? You are paying 130 calories for this, and you're buying to 11 grams of protein. That seems pretty good to me. That's okay. a reasonable bargain. If this is the worst thing you do, you could do a lot worse. Now, there is but actually- not if I eat three of them in one sitting. Right. There is actually, <laughs> they snuck in 14 grams of sugar here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so that, the, that's not yeah. so good. So the minute you have a fruit in, you are now on the, kind of on the sliding scale. Okay, yeah, so yeah. then we should yeah, so go you, out of our way to eat plain yogurt. Yeah, if we're and then eat you can yogurt, add, we should go plain. You can add your own sugar, on <laughs> your own fruit. You can, <laughs> you can add your own fruit to yogurt, yes. and you can add milk and fiber, other fiber. Right. You can right. make it a, a, a nice mixture in your yogurt. Is there anything else that we want to emphasize for this particular show on how to read a label? If, if, if we can convert... For example, you said that the protein that we need all day long has to be divided into three. So we're looking for protein for breakfast. If we have 300 uh, of the protein in the morning and then we have another 300 at lunch and another 300, that's only 900. So at 8 o'clock, around 8 o'clock at night then, I can have a snack? <laughs> Are we talking about your entire protein? The entire protein. day. Yeah. If your protein allotment is 65 grams, that is in the, in the maintenance stage for a, for a person of 5'7". Then you would divide it in, you could divide it 20, 20, 20, or you could divide it 15, 15, 15, and then leave a snack in the afternoon. Right. The most important time to have a snack is between lunch and dinner because the stomach empties in four hours, and it's more than four hours between so lunch and dinner. So the snack... So a little protein snack at 4 o'clock helps the hunger mechanism. Between 3, well, three, I always, three to 4 yeah. o'clock. And, and it depends on when you have your lunch, too. And there's so many things to talk about that we, that we leave things out. But one of the reasons that I talk about protein is that it's the magic ingredient that makes you full. It shuts off your hunger mechanism along with fiber. Protein and fiber combined sh shuts off the brain and the stomach hunger because you give the brain protein and you give the stomach the fiber to fill up. So those two are the magic ingredients that help shut off your hunger mechanism. And you go all day and you're not hungry. What you, when you eat things like, let's say, popcorn, when you eat other things, 
you might not eat them because you're hungry. If you're hungry, you should eat more protein. You should eat over on protein and over on fiber and over on vegetables and, and fruit. That's fine. Or over on legumes, whatever you do. But the minute you start skipping your protein and skipping your fiber, you become very hungry and then you eat popcorn and things like that. And the reason you do that is that either you are you have neglected your good foods that really nourish you, or you have this craving that some people have and they eat even when they're full and even they eat on cue when they see stuff, edible stuff. Because we are not used to thinking that we eat until we're full and we don't need the other things. We are used to walking down the street and people throw sugar at us and throw easy sweet on us. And we just want to eat it because it's there, not because we are hungry. So we need to stop eating just because it's there. We need and to. So in, in summary, if we wanted to start taking this seriously and we needed to read every single label, would we then just line up everything that we buy and, and get out our calculator and, and figure out exactly what we should eliminate? And, and, and so will we end up going through our refrigerators and throwing everything away? We don't need a calculator, and we don't need a, a abacus, and we don't need a piece of paper, and we don't need any of that. All we need is to understand the food groups. Say, I eat protein, I eat fiber, colored fiber, and I eat it until I'm full, and even if I eat more, that's okay. That's what we need. We need to understand what food is. So there you have it. A primer for you to start looking at the number of calories, the number of protein, the uh, ability to read a label knowledgeably and figure out exactly what you should be eating and what you shouldn't be eating. And we're going to continue this kind of a series for those of you that are trying to be healthier and for those of you that maybe need to lose a couple pounds here or there. And we want to thank you so much for joining us at the Paula Fiscal Show. And remember, you can get the food tree on Amazon.com. And Dr. Ronnie will be with us for this season. And we will talk very, very clearly and very, very succinctly about what to look for in your diet. So once again, thank you so much for joining the Paula Fiscal Show. And you can look for us on Sundays at 3 o'clock p.m. And also, all the shows are uploaded to YouTube. Thank you so much.